You are now listening to episode 13 of the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In today's episode, we are covering the basics of supplementation. All right, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. As always, I am your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, bringing you the most cutting edge information available today for real health. And I'm excited about today's show because we are talking about such a popular, popular topic, and that is the topic of supplementation, taking supplements. And and the reason that I get really excited about this is because what I see when people come into the office and, you know, I'm looking through their patient histories and things, and even people with, you know, horrible health, really, you know, with chronic disease on on different medications and things, we'll find that they are still taking supplements. And I'd say that most people, from my perspective, most people today are taking some form of dietary supplement. And, you know, what they've found when they, when they look at this is, more than 50% of the U.S. population now takes some form of nutritional supplement every single day, okay? And so that's the majority of people. Approximately 40% take a daily multivitamin. So most people are supplementing in some way, shape, or form. The reason that this is such a a hot topic and why I want to touch on it today is because not all supplements are created equal. And so a lot of people, they're taking one, two, three, four, five, six to ten different supplements, but they're still suffering from horrible health conditions, or maybe not horrible, but still suffering uh, from some pretty serious health conditions. And the reason for that is because, you know, the word supplement is really important. The word supplement means to supplement. It doesn't, it's not taking the place of anything. And, you know, a lot of times we still have such a medical mindset that we still think, what can I take for this? And, and you may be very against pharmaceutical drugs, but you still take glucosamine chondroitin for your joints, and you still take vitamin C for your immune system, and you still take calcium for your bone mineral density, and you still take ashwagandha for your stress levels, and you still take turmeric for your inflammation, and you know all these different things. And that's still just a very medical mindset. So you have to look at the five essentials that we always talk about. You have to start with those because they are essential, which means that they are absolutely necessary and extremely important. And so essential number one is maximizing your mindset, changing the way that you view and you manage your health, minimizing your stress, and making sure that that is the first step. Number two is maximizing your body's nerve supply, making sure that your spine is well aligned and well adjusted. You know, getting adjusted is kind of like squirting some oil on the tin man. You know, it's allowing your joints to move better. And when your joints can move better, that literally affects every aspect of your overall health. Essential number three is your nutrition, okay? So that's really where supplementation comes in is that, you know, even with a whole food diet today, we still sometimes need supplementation because our food supply has changed from the way that it was 50, 60, 100 years ago. It's not as vitamin dense. It's not as nutrient dense. So that's really where supplementation plays a role. Essential number four is exercise and maximizing your oxygen and lean muscle mass. And essential number five is minimizing your exposures to toxins. Okay, so you have to be doing those five essentials before you should even start looking at supplementation. Uh, some people think, well, if I'm not going to eat well, I might as well take this, this supplement so I'm at least doing something. No, that's absolutely backwards thinking. You have to be doing these five essentials first. You have to be taking care of your spine. You have to be eating a good, clean, whole foods diet with real foods, plant-based, uh, nutrient-dense. You have to be exercising. You have to be avoiding toxins. Then then you can look into taking supplements, okay? So that's the first thing that I want to touch on. But the other thing that I want to touch on is that, you know, not all supplements are created equal. So that's what we're going to talk about today is really the difference between a good and a bad supplement. Go through a few examples of that and then leave you with, you know, what you want to look for uh, when you're shopping for supplements because you absolutely do not want to go to, you know, the lowest bidder. You never want to give anything for your health. You never want it to be done by the lowest bidder. And you never want to buy the cheapest form of supplement. You never want to buy, you know, the cheapest chiropractic care. You never want to buy the cheapest 
car. You never want to buy the cheapest anything, in my opinion, because you're losing out on the quality. And that's the exact same thing with multivitamins or with supplements. You're not getting what you're paying for, basically. But according to the latest statistics, you know, over 50% of the population takes a supplement, over 40% take a daily multivitamin, and the U.S. spends almost 30 billion, billion with a B, dollars per year on supplements. So that's just absolutely crazy that we're spending that much money. And you think about it, you know, you hear about one on Dr. Oz, then you hear about another one in Time Magazine, then you hear about another one on the news, and before you know it, you're taking several. And so here's a study that was done, you know, a survey where they surveyed vitamin and supplement users, and they pulled more than 10,000 different people who who use vitamins and supplements. And first thing, first off, they found that you know, a lot of them were heavy users of supplements who reported taking at least six different supplements every day. So most people, you know, they're not just taking one or taking, you know, one full spectrum multivitamin. Once people are, are, you know, engaged in their health and are looking for something like supplementation, they're taking a lot. And we get it to the point where, you know, I've had patients say that their supplements are overwhelming. They're literally overwhelming. They can't take that many because they're taking too many. They've got to split them up between morning, noon, and night and things like that. But the most popular supplements, when they pulled these supplement users, the most popular ones were number one, fish oil, number two, multivitamins, number three, CoQ10, number four, vitamin D, number five, B vitamins, number six, magnesium, number seven, calcium, number eight, probiotics, and number nine, vitamin C. So those are the top nine. The thing that I see with those is, you know, with the exception of calcium, and I'll argue this later, but with the exception of calcium, every single one of those is really, really good choice. You know, when we do blood and urine testing, CoQ10 and B vitamins are some of the biggest deficiencies that we see. Many people believe that magnesium is one of the biggest deficiencies in our population. Vitamin D is absolutely one of the biggest deficiencies, and fish oil too. You know, next week we're going to talk about what are the supplements that everybody should be on, and I'll give you a spoiler alert that, you know, all of them are in this list. But the problem is, is when we're looking at the quality and what we're actually getting out of these supplements, because not all supplements are created equal. And the reason that this is important is a vitamin starts to lose its potency the minute that it's made, literally the minute that it's made. And if a vitamin doesn't have the potency, then you're not getting the full effect and the full benefit of it. If it doesn't have the potency and the bioavailability, that is, you know, how well your body is actually able to use it. So if a vitamin is not produced properly, it can lose up to 50% of its potency by the time that you purchase it. Okay, so that's incredibly scary. Another thing is, you know, when you're looking at the label of a vitamin, you may think you're getting one thing, but in reality, you may be getting another. Uh, they just ran lab testing, DNA lab testing on supplements found at four of the biggest, you know, retailers in our country, Walmart, Walgreens, GNC, and Target. And what they found when they tested this group of supplements, um, a specific group, I think it was about half a dozen of different supplements, they found that overall there was only a 21% match to the DNA of what they were expecting to find in the supplement based on the label only 21% of that was actually found within the supplements. Okay, so only 21% is actually what was provided on the label. These are things like ginkgo biloba. uh, That was a big one. Another one was saw palmetto. And so they were doing DNA testing to find, does this product actually contain ginkgo biloba? And overall, they found 21% match. So getting them from the big retailers is an incredibly dangerous way or dangerous place to find and to buy your supplements, okay? So you want to watch out for some of those bigger retailers and you want to know what you're looking at. You know, Walmart was the worst one of all. They found at Walmart there was only a 4% match, 4% DNA match with what was advertised. And so that's a huge issue because, you know, a lot of people today, they hear, oh, that this is good or that that is good. Or, you know, I just saw bulk 
cases of CoQ10 at Costco the other day. And CoQ10 is great. It's great for your heart health. It's great for inflammation. It's, it's, you know, like I said, when we do blood and urine testing, it's probably the number one thing that most people, most people need through our, our maximized metabolics, customized supplementation, blood and urine testing, CoQ10. But the CoQ10 from Costco is not going to be the same as the CoQ10 that we sell on our shelves that probably three times more expensive, but is high quality that your body's actually getting and that you can do a retest through your blood and urine, a laboratory retest and show that the levels have actually changed. So you got to watch out for where you're buying your supplements from and you know, what you're really getting from the store and, you know, going to the lowest bidder there. I want to give three quick examples of, you know, what you want to look out for and why this can be, you know, a little bit dangerous. One of them is vitamin E. Okay. So this is kind of the difference between the, the words natural or synthetic on the label of, of your vitamin or your supplement because the word natural can be very misleading. And a good example of this is, is vitamin E. A manufacturer can use a blend of 10% natural vitamin E and 90% synthetic. So it's overwhelmingly a synthetic vitamin E, but it can still label the product as natural vitamin E. Okay. And so you can tell this on the label because natural vitamin E will be listed as what's called D-alpha-tosopherol, whereas synthetic vitamin E's are listed as D-L before the alpha. But most people aren't going to know this, right? So what you need to look out for is you need to find a very high-quality brand or store that you really, really trust. You, know, you can get these from a healthcare provider or you can get them from a good, high-quality store but don't go getting your vitamin E, you know, at GNC where they've got 12 different brands and you go for the one that's a dollar 25 cheaper than the rest of them. That's not a good way to purchase your supplements. And you also just want to be very, very careful with the labeling. Uh, because like we talked about, you know, with the, the 21% DNA match, the word natural can be very misleading. You know, some supplements that will say gluten free, they've actually tested them, find that they have gluten in them or other inflammatory things. So you want to make sure that they're coming from a, a high quality source. We'll give you some action steps and some things that you can look for in a minute here. The other one, another one that you want to watch out for or another good example of this is one called selenium. Okay. And selenium is a powerful antioxidant. Okay. So it's become more popular in the recent past because it's been shown to be a powerful antioxidant and studies have shown that it can, you know, be beneficial in, in cancer, in heart disease in cataracts and macular degeneration or, you know, some eye conditions, some degenerative eye conditions, cold sores and shingles, you know, some skin, skin type conditions, uh, even in brain health and, and even in arthritis, helping to fight arthritis. So selenium has become really popular. But now a problem is that a lot of selenium sources are inorganic selenium sources that are found in many multivitamins. And they're a database for pesticide chemicals, the PAN is a database for pesticide chemicals. It lists them both as highly toxic, these two forms of inorganic selenium. So they're called sodium selenite and sodium selenate, two potentially problematic ingredients. Those are inorganic seleniums, okay? So the scary thing about this is that sodium selenite or selenate can actually cause cancer. They're carcinogenic. They've been found to be carcinogenic, and those are in many multivitamins, whereas the selenium that's found in food or in, you know, like a laboratory chelated form that's been extracted from a whole food source have been shown to prevent or combat cancer. Okay, so that's something that you have to look out for is that, you know, this is, and this is the same with, you know, a lot of others, you know, calcium is another example. That's what we're going to talk about next, but you can get calcium from different sources and you can either get calcium from rocks or you can get calcium from plants and whichever one you eat, you know, you are what you eat. So you're either becoming a rock or you're becoming a live, vibrant, living thing. So calcium is another one that you want to watch out for. And, you know, calcium is a big one that a lot of people take because they think they need to for bone mineral density and things like that that have been, you know, fueled by by industry uh, to make us believe that, you know, to sway the public to believe that. But, you know, 
in 2012, they did a, an analysis of all the data out there on calcium. They found that consuming a high intake of calcium above the recommended daily allowance, which is typically, you know, through supplementation, taking a calcium supplement or taking a multivitamin with uh, a high dosage of calcium, it provided no benefit for hip or lumbar bone mineral density. Okay, so that's why most people take calcium is for bone mineral density. And the supplements have actually been shown to have no benefit. Another one found in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that calcium supplements did not reduce fracture rates in older women and may even increase the rate of hip fracture. So that's why we, why most people would take a calcium supplement. But here's the thing is, you know, when we say that you know, some forms of supplements can be beneficial, some can be harmful. Dietary intake of calcium protects against heart disease, but supplemental calcium may increase the risk, okay? So a, a study that studied 24,000 men and women found that those who used calcium supplements had a 139% greater risk of heart attack. Okay, that was an 11-year study that was published in the British Medical Journal, one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world, found that they had a 139% greater risk of heart attack. So you really have to be careful when it comes to supplements, finding the right ones, finding the best ones. Okay, so a couple action steps that I want to leave you with when you're looking at supplements and how quality they are. Number one, you know, the first action step is, like we already said, you know, don't go to the lowest bidder. Don't get your supplements from Walmart. Don't get them even from, from Walgreens. Uh, you know, GNC has good sources, but they also have bad sources. I would recommend a, you know, going to a more natural store where you're just gonna, you're just gonna weed out a lot of the bad choices. You know, these stores might be a couple of dollars more expensive, but think about what you're getting and you don't want to mess around when it comes to your health. We always talk about that. There's no, no price tag that you can put on being healthy. And if you're paying a dollar fifty or even five dollars more a month, for a good quality supplement that your body's actually going to use, it's absolutely worth it so you're not throwing your money away. So that's the, the first one. The second one is, you know, your, the supplement should be, uh, made in a GMP, um, facility. Okay. So a GMP facility, what that means is, uh, good manufacturing practice. Okay. So that'll be on the label. That, that's a, a must. Most companies will follow GMPs. Uh, good manufacturing practices follow their, their guidelines. But this is a little bit of assurance that the label is correct and that it's been tested for bioavailability. But then the last thing that you want to look for, the biggest, the most important thing, no matter what supplement you're taking, is you want it to be a whole food source. You want it to be a whole food source. You don't want it to be synthetic and you don't want it to be isolated. Okay, synthetic and isolated forms of vitamins and nutrients are just not what's found in nature. And what they've shown is that when your body gets these synthetic or isolated forms, it treats them like a foreign substance, what's called a xenobiotic. It treats them like a foreign substance that it doesn't know what to do with, so it just flushes it right through and right out. That's why some of lower quality multivitamins, it's been reported that people will have like neon neon green or neon yellow urine uh, because that that's coming from the supplement because your body doesn't know what to do with it. So you want it to be from a whole food source. When you look at the back, you know, I'm looking at, uh, at a maximized living men's whole food multivitamin formula for men right now. Okay, so right on the front, it says whole food multivitamin formula. Then at the bottom, it says whole food dietary supplement. Then, so right on the front, it's on there. It's actually on here four times on the front because, and that's what most companies are going to do. If they're going to take the time to get you this quality, quality product, they're going to let you know on the label. So it says whole food multivitamin formula, whole food vitamins and minerals, probiotics and enzymes, 18 whole fruits and vegetables, 
supports prostate, bone, heart, skin, and reproductive health, whole food dietary supplement. Okay, it also says on there 60 vegetarian caplets. So you want to look for, you can look for, you know, what the caplet is made from or what the tablet is made from. You don't want it to have fillers, binders. You don't want any coatings on it to be synthetic. A lot of companies will use cheap ingredients that they can get at a very low cost, but it affects how the tablets break down. So this one says a vegetarian capsule. This is one that also, you know, is available on, on our website. You know, you can find this on our website, www.alignfamilychiropractic.com. Uh, you can access that, you know, through the podcast homepage or you can, you know, read a little bit more about me. That's actually our clinics practice. This has just, to, just to go through a couple of things that this has, you know, it's got all the different vitamins, uh, A, C, D, E, K, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all, all the different minerals too. But also it has a couple blends in here like a, uh, a muscle recovery blend. So this one's specific for men. This has a, a muscle recovery blend that we know is whole food based. It has a vitamin C blend. It has a digestive support blend, which has a lot of digestive enzymes. And it has a raw fr- fruit and veggie blend specifically specifically formulated for prostate, bone, heart, skin, and reproductive health, specific for men. The women's varies a little bit for breast health, for bone health, for reproductive and hormonal health. So really, really cool, but this is a really, really high quality product. And, you know, this is the only thing that I would take. This is the only thing that I have my mom take. This is the only thing that I have, you know, my wife take. And this is the only thing that I would recommend that you take. It doesn't have to be a maximized living product, but find a high quality vitamin uh, so that you're not taking Centrum, you're not taking Flintstones, you're not taking the garbage. Get a really good one that your body is going to know how to use. It's going to be able to absorb and assimilate it so that you can actually continue to move in a healthier direction rather than unknowingly be poisoning your body and actually be moving in a sicker or less healthy direction. That's the biggest thing. So stay tuned next week as we talk about the top supplements that everybody should be on or that the majority of us should at least be considering that most people need that we are not getting from our food supply today. And keep following up. Listen to the Real Health Podcast. Listen to the archives. Click on the show notes. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on YouTube. You can follow Align Family Chiropractic or Align Utah on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. Stay tuned with us. And until next week, this is the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.